There is one obvious fact that everyone should know that what happens in China will impact the rest of the world. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today I've got some huge news. This is something that I warned about back in April of 2021, and now it is starting to really take hold. I'm going to show you the charts. I'm going to show you the articles. It's going to take me a little bit of time, but I need to get into all of that to then show you how this all really comes together. It is so important to understand what's happening with the inflation and deflation debate, what we're looking at with commodities as that relates to all of the other equities, including the tech sector. This is so key right now. Let's get into it right away. I wanted to begin by taking a look at this article out of Bloomberg. Mounting inflation fears push the U.S. consumer sentiment lower. I will get into the retail sales. I'll show you the charts. I'll show you the information directly from the articles. But of course, just wanted to touch on this. First, University of Michigan sentiment gauge trails all estimates consumers concerned about rising gas, home, and auto prices, not to mention just about everything else. So you'll look at the chart right here. Price concerns consumer sentiment fell in early May as inflation fears mount. You see it's the lowest since February. Looking at the bottom, it's the UMIT one-year uh, inflation expectations that has risen now. Now, those expectations, of course, could turn around at any time. But for this period, we have seen them rising. And why? Because of all of the lockdowns, because of the shortages, because of the money printing, and because of the stimulus, among so many other things. I don't believe, personally, that it's just one factor. You're going to see a news article always take one angle, but I'm trying to give you it all. Consumer spending will still advance despite higher prices due to pent-up demand and record saving balances. There is some truth to that, of course, but there's much more to it. Retail sales in the U.S. unexpectedly stalled in April 2021. Disappointing markets that expected a just 1% increase. Now, you could see what had happened the month before, 10.7. But at first glance, it's hard to see. But look, right here, it's zero basically flat at this point. So this is what they were worried about. This is where we're at. And why is that the case? Well, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Look at this. U.S. capital running out of gas, even as Colonial Pipeline recovers. You've got problems here. There's so many, some of which are temporary, some of which are, you know, really going on for a period of time. And what does this all mean? People are asking the question, what's going to come of this? Where is, is this going to go? Well, that brings me to this. Retail sales stalled in April as Americans ventured out more to bars and restaurants but spent less on things such as clothes and sporting goods. You can't necessarily get away with the gas. You've got to continue to buy it if you need to travel. There aren't as many people taking the public transit at this time. So they're going out there. A lot of them have been buying used cars, which have gone up like crazy, by the way. But at the same time, you're noticing that certain things that maybe they didn't need to buy haven't been as you know in demand as some of these other things. But you can see right here, people are going out more to the restaurants. I should give you some uh, new data uh, regarding open table to give you a look at that. But regardless, it's just showing you the details broken down again and again. Here we have the important point that is, retail sales in the U.S. were flat after soaring in March when many Americans received their $1,400 stimulus checks that boosted spending. So the spending comes from the stimulus check, and as soon as that evaporates, which was basically instantly, the spending declines. So what are you going to do next month? Is there going to be another check? Is there going to be another one after that? Are they going to increase the amount that they're pumping out there into people's accounts every single month? Is that what we're getting to? Is this the beginning of MMT? Many people have been considering that. They've been talking about this. So I'm just bringing this to you. I think it's pretty clear. If the government is sending checks to people, then they're going to spend it. 
not that many of them are going to stick it under their mattress. I know some people that have been buying two by fours and putting them under their mattress, but certainly this has allowed for additional spending. I know some people that have been taking the stimulus and they've been buying stocks with it. Other people have been paying down their debt with it. Some people have been you know, investing in all kinds. And there's all kinds of different things that have been happening today. But I think it's key to actually watch how you have an instant boost, which they can show in the statistics, and they might not even highlight the April that data going forward. They might always be mentioning the March data until they get some new information that looks positive. I've seen the media do this, and they have a good reason to do it because they don't want things to look bad. And then you've got these... Um, Unfortunate individuals uh, in the main, in the not the mainstream, of course, they're they're long lost. But uh, you know, you you look at the so-called alternative news. Um, I'm not going to go there. In housing markets like Cape Cod and Jersey Shore, homes for sale disappeared over this last period. I mean, that's how low the inventories are becoming. And along with this, you've got construction that's been taking place because people move into these homes. Maybe they're a bit outdated. Maybe they need to put an extension. Maybe they need to do something to make it more fitting for where their desires. And that, of course, requires raw materials. And let me tell you, people in these different industries, whether that's carpentry or whatever, are in high demand today. They're basically raising their prices. And of course, at the same time, the materials are higher. So people are paying a lot, a lot more. But on the other side of that equation, San Francisco tech companies are sitting on a record amount of empty office space as, I mean, I've talked about this on the channel all along this whole period of time. I mean, it was pretty obvious. Didn't You did not need a crystal ball for this. Record amounts of empty office space and offering perks to lure the tenants. So just like they're doing in the, you know, the, what you, what you see with people in, let's say, Manhattan, they're getting two free months rent, they're getting, you know, come here, we'll give you money and so on, like really trying desperately to get a tenant in there to fill the void. The same situation is happening, not just with the tech companies here, but of course, you're going to see this everywhere. Retail space is one huge one, as well as office space. And there's something really key to understand. All of this is interconnected with the derivatives. That's why people don't get it. They think of a store as a store and that's it. They think of somebody's house like a house and that's it. But if they only took it a step further and understand how the financial system works and why this supposed contained subprime crisis really enveloped the whole world and started to unravel everything, then they would realize how dangerous this really is. They get into more details, but I think I made myself clear. Look, this is where we're at. Back in April, if I just scroll down, I think April 8th, okay? April 8th, 2021, this is the video. The most important indicator in China is something that you must know. That was the, the video. You can search for it if you want. But basically, the premise of the video is this. The China credit impulse, how much money the Chinese banks are actually lending out is going to be the major determining factor for what happens globally. And you might be thinking, how the heck is that possible? Look, this is one of the best leading indicators that you can find. Remember, I said leading indicators because it doesn't happen as soon as this thing starts to come down, all of a sudden all hell breaks loose. No. Look, right in this article here, China Central Bank asked the nation's major lenders to curtail loan growth for the rest of this year. So we're talking about 2021 year. After a surge in the first two months, uh, it looks like stoked the bubble risks, according to people familiar with the matter. And that has actually, at that point, you see the chart. I showed you this before in a different video where you started to see that credit impulse tip over as I draw here on, the, on this article. It starts to tip over. If the trend continues, we've got a big problem. But guess what? That's exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. Look at you, you're looking at the commodities index in this case here. So we have had a huge rise. However, we are noticing that not just this commodity and not silver in this case, but I wanted to show you as well. 
might actually break out and, and be very different than the rest. But you got the commodities index. You could see that there has been, let me go back to that, just a little bit of a bump upward. But in general, it's come down from the peak, right? Silver seems to be part of that, you know, following that same sort of pattern. But look at copper. Look at iron ore. Look at lumber. Lumber is one we've been talking about a lot. Steel, same situation. And look at the China credit impulse. Isn't that interesting? That right during this period here, one of the best leading indicators that you can find, China credit impulse coming down, and so have the commodities followed. Now, it's not just commodities. Look at what's happening in the markets. Look at what happened with tech stocks. Look at other stocks that have not necessarily been able to make it back to where they were before. You're seeing big, big names like Tesla, who had so much enthusiasm behind them, but now suddenly they're not really looking so favorably. Now, there's a lot going on with that. But you're going to go to the alternative news, and I've got a name right on the top of my head. I'm really fighting it right now, to, not to mention it. But they're going to tell you that you need to put all of your money into tech because it has been depressed for this period, and you're getting these things on sale. That might be the case. Absolutely. But know the indicators. Don't just take their word for it. How this person regurgitates other people's information they simply get that they think that they're being creative by then selling it to you you join their club and now you're going to be able to profit from that information when they haven't even put their spin on it i mean they're just reselling their nonsense i'm upset i'm upset look at this this is the commodity the nasdaq to commodity ratio essentially okay so, I mean, we've gone into new territories, as you can see right here, but just take a look at this. It skyrocketed through this period and has since come down. Now, this is an interesting change. This is an interesting trend. Whether or not that's going to come down. Look, dot-com bubble, all right? What happened after that? Of course, commodities started to rise. So we're getting some interesting information. And at this point, we can't tell which is the actual direction it's going to head. If you want to know the future, go to the alternative media that claims to be alternative media that regurgitates uh, other people's work. You know, you can, they'll, they'll tell you everything. But here at this channel, I just can bring you that data and you have to make the decision for yourself. This is the commodities equities ratio. Look at this. You could see over these periods of time. I mean, it is very clear that there is really, I mean, an overwhelming majority of investors have shunned commodities. So they are attractive in simply the fact that they were underperforming for such a long period. And if you compare the two, I mean, it starts to look like this is a good investment just because of that. They've been underperforming, so maybe money will go in there, and certainly it has over this period. But there's always going to be pullbacks, so watch out. And of course, a lot of this has to do with what we are seeing you know, in the uh, financial speculation that goes on behind the scenes. It's not necessarily the fundamentals that affect the price. And then we have this to throw it, you know, this whole thing, throw a curveball at you again. The headlines last August and September blared. Trans-Pacific rates are going crazy. Rates are on fire. Records are shattered. Oh, what cargo shippers would give to pay the rates that they paid eight or nine months ago. Those earlier records were repeatedly shattered. It just happened yet again. Non-stop demand of ocean freight and the resulting delays and equipment shortages pushed spot rates to new heights across all major trade lanes once again this week. So Freight Waves is covering this here. If you want to see it, check out the charts that are here. But 
I think it's very clear, okay? I don't wanna harp on this too much. The prices are rising in so many different aspects. It's not just looking at the lumber price. It's not just looking at one or the other, but you can clearly see prices are rising. The demand is also there. If anybody does importing and exporting, you know how this has been a problem. And I think that now we have to look at the Money GPS Insights to tie this all in together. So let's break it down right now. Number one, you got to understand that as the stimulus faded, so did the consumer spending. So you can see and you can track that progress when a new stimulus check comes out, when the expansion of the money supply takes place. This is, of course, going to push up the markets or the economy. It depends where that money goes. It's sometimes hard to tell, but I think it's very clear and obvious and people should definitely pay very close attention. Number two, you look at the China credit impulse, see what happened with commodities, and notice that these two are very correlated. Historically, the China credit impulse is one of the best leading indicators that you can find. And right now, that's sending out a worrying signal to investors everywhere. And then we have number three. We are getting mixed messages in the data because it is too early and because things are certainly not normal today. So I would be very careful. I would be watching where my money is being kept and realize that this situation here could change at any moment. So where you are putting your money is going to be extremely, extremely risky to necessarily believe that what we experience over the last few months, over the last year, will continue into the future. Like I always say, hedge your bets and always prepare for a worsening condition. And then you can have your money where you think that this is going to be more of a safe and sound type investment. Don't necessarily push pedal to the metal. Don't use margin like they tell you to in these uh, alternative news broadcast or whatever you want to call them, you know, you've got to actually be prudent at this point here and, uh, you know, take a more well-balanced approach. Let me tell you right now, if you are not already on the insiders, you've got to be because that's my way of actually communicating to you directly. Five days a week, I'm going to email you the video of the day. Later on, that's going to contain original content. It's going to give you uh, information that you need to have. But for the time being, all I'm doing is, and, and this is to keep it so that I can make sure I do it every day, to just keep it to the video of the day. You're going to get that. Why? Why am I even doing this? It's very clear that I need to do away with the system, this current platform. I need to do away with it over a period of time. I am taking the steps right now. I've got more steps prepared, more planned. I hope you're going to support me on this. This is so important. This is one of the most uh, important factors here. So you could sign up over there. It's free. Obviously, you get your email in there. You're going to get that email every day and you're basically going to be informed of every time my video posts Posts, you will get that. I think it's really key because look, it's not coming up in the home feed and not coming up in the subscri subscription. People are getting unsubscribed from me and so on. This is the way that I can guarantee that I get the information to you. Sign up at the link at themoneygps.com. Look, if you haven't already, you've got to sign, you have to give this uh, like to the video, please. I really I do appreciate that. And if you haven't seen my books already, there's so much detail so much data that's available at, at themoneygps.com as well. And if you haven't already, watch this video. This is, this is the one I was talking about, talking about the China Credit Impulse. Click on it and I'll see you there.